Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to go through um, the practical in uh, A2 physics that looks at induced EMFs in a magnetic field. Now in order to um, do this we're trying to, um, well our aim of this experiment is either going to be um, to try and verify that a certain um, relationship is correct or we're going to try and figure out what is the magnetic flux linkage in something called a search coil. Now this is our best um, kind of tool that we're going to use. Now what a search coil actually is, is it is just a plastic rod that has a tiny coil uh, in the end of the rod. Okay, and this tiny coil um, we're going to place inside a magnetic field and if we place this coil inside a magnetic field we're going to induce an EMF inside the search coil so it allows an EMF um, to be induced so EMF is induced and this is going to have a wire connected all the way down it that is then going to allow us to connect this to an oscilloscope so that we can measure the magnitude of that induced EMF since we obviously know that it is going to be uh, alternating. So what we first have to do is come up with some way for us to be able to um, induce an EMF, which means we have to start off with some changing magnetic field. Now the way we're going to do that is we will have a circuit set up. So we want to set up a circuit and the circuit needs to have an alternating power supply, which we uh, usually write with this kind of um, symbol. Now we're going to have a um, an ammeter in here. Now the ammeter isn't really important. This is going to be an analog um, ammeter. And the reason I say this isn't important is because really we know that this is going to constantly change. Our whole point of this is we're trying to maintain a constant magnetic flux density um, or a constantly um, Ch changing magnetic flux density at, a at the same rate. We don't want it to go um, too high all of a sudden and then drop too low and then we want it to make sure that we have some sort of consistency with this uh, magnetic flux density and the rate of it changing. Since we obviously know from Faraday's law that it's the rate of change of the magnetic flux density that is going to induce this EMF. Now what we're going to say is we need some sort of coil or um, wire or solenoid that is going to actually produce this kind of magnetic field. So what we're going to have is going to be a coil and in different schools you'll do different things. Some of you will take um, something that looks more like a slinky and you will um, have something like this and you will be able to place the probe inside the slinky. Uh, some of you might have uh, a huge coil um, with multiple wraps around the outside of it um, and that will be your um, probe. Now I'm going to use this representation. I'm going to say that this is a coil that's kind of wrapped around some sort of plastic, um, I don't know, spherical um, or circular um, wheel type um, situation and this is then going to be able to produce that alternating um, magnetic field, which then means I am going to um, place the coil in the center or the search coil. I'm going to place the search coil in the center of this. And this is then going to be connected to an oscilloscope. And the scope is going to read the um, some sort of sinusoidal curve right because this is how um, these scopes work. I'm going to read some sort of uh, trace based on the EMF that's induced here. I know it's going to be alternating so this is what I'm going to observe. Now the key now is how do we actually know what we should be measuring? How do we make sure that we're trying to um, either measure the flux linkage or the um, maximum EMF or whatever we're trying to measure? Now what we know from if I were to just rotate this around in this um, 
thing. So therefore, basically changing whatever this angle is, which we're going to call theta, I know that that's going to induce a different EMF based on the fact that a spinning coil will have B A N omega times sine of omega t. But I'm now going to replace this with a theta because I know it's going to have a sine theta kind of relationship. Now, what this means is therefore that actually I only really want to prove if I want to calculate the magnetic uh, flux linkage, I only really have to measure the EMF and the angle. So I am proving that the EMF is proportional to sine of theta, which is how I'm going to approach this now. So that means I need to take measurements of the maximum EMF measured on this uh, oscilloscope and the angle, which means I'm going to need a protractor set up. I'm going to start off at some fixed zero. So I start at some theta equals zero and I measure the epsilon naught, which is the peak EMF that's produced on this oscilloscope. Now there's a little kind of life hack that we use quite often in order to measure just the emf we don't care about the sinusoidal behavior of it right we don't care about how it varies with time um, we can just say that um, we want to know the peak voltage which means actually on the oscilloscope we can turn off the time base and if we turn off the time base what we see on the scope is just going to be a straight line from this going up and down but it's never going to be traveling um, along because the wave is no longer traveling it's simply just an oscillation going up and down therefore we can say if this is centered correctly then the maximum height here is epsilon naught and that is what we're measuring for each of these um, angles we will then uh, continue to measure different angles and EMF values. Now we have to make sure as a kind of to reduce uncertainties the whole probe or the, the search coil in this case the search coil must be in the center of the um, of the larger coil or of the spring or whatever you're using. Um, because if I were to alter the position of this, I know there's a magnetic field here that's not going to be uniform. And hence, I'm actually going to end up having um, a different magnetic flux density. My EMF is going to change between each value. I need to make sure that it is towards the center. The way I can do that is just to clamp the, um, the, like the uh, plastic thing that's attached to. OK, so I clamp the coil in place. And that means I then rotate the clamp stand rather than rotating the coil. That means that I'm going to um, always end up having it in the correct position. And what I can get from this are a series of results for the EMF of each of these, along with so the EMF measured in volts from this. I can get the um, angle theta um, in, let's go with degrees, radians, really up to you. I can then calculate what sine of theta is, um, which is just going to be a number. And then this is going to give me the graph, since what I'm trying to um, prove is the proportionality between epsilon and sine of theta. So I want to actually plot a graph of how the EMF or the maximum EMF value for each of them changes with the angle or if I want a straight line sine of the angle um, as I'm going uh, around this circle. Now obviously what I'm expecting is a straight line because of this equation that epsilon is equal to B A N omega sine of theta. So I'm going to end up with a straight line that's y equals and all of this section here is the gradient where sine of theta is 
uh, x. Now, if you remember, one of the um, possibilities for this is to just measure the flux linkage, which is BAN, and therefore um, BAN is going to be proportional to the gradient. However, we also have this factor of omega here. Okay. Now, this factor of omega we can calculate because of this oscilloscope reading. We can actually read the frequency of these um, oscillations on the oscilloscope and hence figure out what omega is from reading the time period, then using that to calculate the frequency, then saying that omega is 2 pi times the frequency. I can get omega. I then know um, the flux linkage through, so this is the flux linkage through the search coil. Okay, this is very important because that means that actually the area here and the number of turns in the coil don't um, depend on this large coil that you set up to begin with, right? It's not the area of this large coil, it's the area of the search coil because that's what the flux linkage is passing through, okay? So from uh, that, that logic then, if we know what, how many turns we can have, we can then measure the cross-sectional area. If we know the cross-sectional area and the number of turns, we can measure the um, magnetic flux density at the center of this um, coil and so on. Okay, from this point, now that we've carried out the experiment and gotten this list of results, we can do our analysis however you like. As long as you have this method, which will probably stay consistent for a bunch of um, different ways that you're going to do it, you will end up knowing uh, how to do your analysis based on your instructions from your supervisor. So this then concludes how to um, measure the magnetic flux density or magnetic flux linkage. And thank you for watching.